Patrick Dampier. I got that right. Welcome to the Hell Fucking Yeah podcast. Thanks for being here, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Of course, man. So what's new with you, man? How's life? And where are you living now? I'm living in Madison, Tennessee. I bought a house here about a year ago. Okay. And uh, how are things? I guess there is, I really can't complain considering uh, the state of the U.S. right now. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have it worse than me. I'm, yeah. I'm cleaning houses uh, right now, which is helping with my sanity, believe it or not. It's okay. getting me out of the house every single day. Sure. Uh, giving me a physical activity to do, keeping some income coming in while there's no touring. Absolutely. Um, throwing every penny at this studio I'm building. So yeah, it could be worse. Absolutely. So for those who don't know, uh, Patrick is a singer, songwriter, and producer who plays many instruments. Uh, his most recent release, uh, Say I'm Pretty, and the remix album, right? It's a couple tracks, just remixed. Um, they're available now at on Bandcamp. Uh, or is that right? They are on Bandcamp. Last time I looked, yeah, they're on all the streams. <laughs> there, there's some, there's some vinyl available, I believe, too. Yep. Not the remixes, but the actual record. Right. Um, and you can get That's all that. Yep. You can get all those links at your website too, PatrickCampier.com. Correct. Very cool. So, who, um, what was the first thing you heard that made you want to start making music? Uh, and how long have you been doing it? Hmm. Well, I've been doing it professionally since about 2005. Okay. But first thing I heard, wow. Um, probably REM. Okay. I would say. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff that I got bombarded with around 1991 that I got really excited about. And REM was probably the group I got the most excited about. Yeah. And I'm still really excited about them today. Very cool. Um, I couldn't help but notice a few things uh, online I, when I saw, um, when I was looking up. Uh, the Ray Parker Jr. song from the Ghostbusters. That's like your, your jam, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Big time. For, awesome story about that, man. So I used to do like freestyle BMX um, and things like that. I mean, I was little. I was like five years old. We're talking like training wheels. Um, but that was my song. That was the song I, I competed to. So when I saw that, I was like, all right, cool. We got a, <laughs> we got a little connection choice, there. Man. That's my favorite movie Great of song. all time, too. Ghostbusters is yeah. the first one. Yeah. That is a good one, man. What do you think about the second one? I think it's good. <laughs> not great but i think the first one is great the first one is great uh what do you think about the remake the the, the, the all female one, one. Would, um you know i enjoyed it i'm glad i saw it uh i went and saw that in the theater um i thought it was a little weird that it uh acted as if the first two hadn't happened mm. you know it was yeah. totally in its own world and um, I also thought that the humor, I don't know, like those first two had some pretty highbrow jokes in them. And uh, I felt like the third one had some pretty low hanging fruit, you know, it was a little, little too sure. easy. Um, with that said, it was fun. I'm, I'm glad I saw it. I'm really looking forward to this next one. Yeah. The, the trailer looks amazing. It really does. And I mean, Paul Rudd is in it, so can't be that bad. Um, so, who are your biggest influences growing up and uh, who are your biggest influences now as far as creating music? Hmm. You know, my biggest influences now probably aren't even musicians. They're probably comedians. Okay. I love that. I love that. I, do, I don't listen to a lot of music currently, especially during this pandemic. I've just been, listening to a lot of comedians um i love that show crashing with pete holmes okay yeah and i'm really sad that it got canceled by hbo but i was into that like i would watch that for another two years if i could sure um influenced by i don't know i mean i maybe it's not like a direct influence obviously since they're different art forms but um i don't, I don't know, know. The, the headspace that these comedians are getting into um, 
I don't I don't really get starstruck around other musicians, but I do when I get to meet a comedian because they they do what I wish I could do. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Sure. Um, I don't know. I've, I've been trying to get in more of that kind of a headspace for for writing. Not that I'm writing comedy, but just I don't know. It's very hard to explain, but um, that's my honest answer. <laughs> I like it. I actually really like it. It brings me to my next question, really, because I didn't even know that. Um, <laughs> who who are some of your favorite stand-up comedians? Because I love stand-up comedy. Yeah, I like Bill Burr a lot. Oh yeah. Um, I love Brian Regan. Uh, Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, Richard Pryor, um, Bill Hicks, oh, yeah. um, Louis Black, um, yeah, he, so I used to tour in this band called the Minor Birds, mm -hmm. and Louis Black would come out to see us whenever we'd be in New York City. And so that was that was a big deal for me, getting to know him a little bit. And he actually came out once in Washington, D.C., because that's where um, his parents are. And after the show, we went out to dinner and his parents were there. And he he uh, had about a half hour conversation, just him and I at the bar alone. And he said the whole reason was to just get away from his parents. <laughs> <laughs> So it was, it, was, enough. it was an incredible experience for me getting to talk to him. I mean, he was just like he is on stage, just quieter. Sure, sure. Yeah, I actually met him. He didn't wag his finger at me. What's that? And he didn't wag his finger at oh, me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I actually just saw him last year, um, you know, before we weren't allowed to go out anymore. <laughs> uh, and I've seen him a couple of times, but I just saw him recently last year. He, he's great, man. One of the, one of the best. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you work with such artists, including, including production, such as Thayer Serrano, Jessica Lee Mayfield, Paper Rival, and of course, Fences. Uh, I wouldn't be here without him. <laughs> uh, so yeah. what would you say is the major difference working on projects with others or working on your own album? I'd say it's a lot easier for me to, if you're talking about production, it's a lot yeah. easier for me to work with other people. Um, I second guess everything. Uh, I don't second guess when I write, but when it comes time to actually produce and record, I second guess everything. But when it's someone else, I can, you know, they're second guessing everything and I can be their sounding board. Sure. Uh, and I can, I can be the one to tell them to not overthink things and relax. But, you know, I don't have anyone telling me that, but the end of the day i try to but it's it's uh it's not always easy so i'd say that's the biggest difference right very cool um so when's the last time you've been on tour or played any shows or anything like that if you can remember yeah uh it was about this time last year was okay. the last time i was wow. on tour um yeah i was on yeah i was definitely on tour this time last year i think i was in michigan playing a film festival believe it wow. or not very cool uh, what film festival? You know, I, I don't I remember, remember the okay. name of it. Um, it was one of those deals. So it, it was the Minor Birds again. Um, I play with them from time to time whenever Laura, Laura's got a really good thing going for her in LA now as a, uh, uh, she's got a film production company going and that's, that's her main gig right now. But um, she got this offer from this film festival to tour. And I guess that the the pay, the ch the check at the end of the day was was pretty good. Like making it worth doing and basing an entire tour around that show. Sure. It was something I had never heard of, but it was really fun. There were a lot of people there. Uh, audience seemed to care and they listened. So, um, but yeah, I uh, I just can't remember the name of it. Yeah, that's no, all good. Um, so, any tours planned for twenty twenty one? Depending, of course. You know, no, um, go back to normal. <laughs> I don't. I'm in writing and demoing mode right now. Um, and I'm also writing with some other folks currently. And uh, let's see. Oh, the studio build, like I mentioned earlier, that's kind of that's taking 95% of my attention. Like, I, I, I'm sure bought this property in Madison about a year ago with the intention of building a studio on it from scratch. So I knew that was gonna take a long time, but um, yeah, that's, that's kind of uh, got all my focus right now. 
Gotcha. So what, what would you say? So anything good has come out of this, you know, shutdown or uh, any projects working on behind the scenes or. Hmm. Anything. Besides good. building the studio, of course. Yeah. I, <laughs> man, I, I haven't, <laughs> I've really been doing the social distancing thing. I've been really serious about it. So it's like most of these houses I go and clean, I'm by myself. Um, which I like, I'm getting a lot of, uh, solitude that way and reflection it actually helps me write a lot. I've gotten a lot done on my own. Sure. Um, and I've been writing with people via, uh, voice memos and, uh, email and zoom. Mm -hmm. But, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if that's a good thing to come out of this. I mean, otherwise we would have just been doing it in person, but, right. um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking forward, uh, to, to getting on the other side of it personally. Sure, absolutely. Um, so let's talk about your debut album, Say I'm Pretty. Uh, it's a very unique record to me. Uh, I really, really dig it. Um, and I'm having difficulty actually comparing it to anything else. Like if I were to explain it to somebody, I would just be like, you have to listen to it. It's kind of its own thing. Um, so I find it amazing that things like that still exist really. Um, Cause there's so much music out there. It's like, how do you even, sound original how do you not sound like something else um so what would you say is your secret ingredient in this record in particular hmm. well I, all the songs were written with no production style in mind at all and that's pretty much always how i do it when i'm writing for myself it's just one chordal instrument and for me that would be a guitar or a piano and um and a voice and if to me, if the song can't survive that presentation, then it's not a good song. You know, I should be right. able to sit down in a coffee shop and play in front of 10 people and have that translate into a good song or someone should be able to cover it, you know, and it's still a good song. Um, so that's how I wrote all the songs on that record. Um, and then it wasn't until like, you know, a year later that I actually got into the studio and started to chip away. So I was, I was not, so inside of the songs anymore as from a writing standpoint and i could kind of produce i could kind of approach it with a producer hat on and be like okay well what do i want this what vibe do i want this to convey with the uh with what the instruments are playing and the way it's mixed and everything um richard swift actually kind of helped me arrive at that sound too because i started recording it out at his place um in cottage grove oregon and that's where we just sort of got the ball rolling and then i finished it all in nashville but um yeah he's the one who kind of half jokingly pushed it in this kind of an 80s direction and i just went with it i thought it was fun yeah so i thought it through i mean it, it doesn't sound totally 80s but it's definitely got a little got the elements the absolutely think of the cap to the 80s for sure absolutely um so how long did it take roundabout to make the record from start to finish uh well it was spread out over about two years okay. but as far as the actual time i spent uh, two months because yeah. <laughs> it was all in between working with other folks you know right well either way two months i mean it's really fucking good Thank um you. so yeah. i and i know there's a remix record too uh a couple of the tracks are remixed um but is there anything on the you know cutting room floor that's going to make like an ep or anything like that no, there's nothing on the cutting room floor. Like the the B side, the the cutting room floor already is like I put I put out a seven inch for the song under my door, and the, the B side is I'm with you. So that that was like the cutting okay. room. Okay. Um, so that's that is available on a seven inch, and it's also on Spotify. So, um, but I've got I've got a lot of stuff that I've written that I'm sifting through for uh, for what I'm going to do next. Very cool. So yeah, I'm excited to hear what's next. Um, so. When did you meet Christopher Mansfield? Uh, and what are your collaborations with him? I know you work on his work on failure sculptures a bit or Oh yeah, yeah. We yeah. made that we made that whole thing together, like between the hours of uh one AM and six. <laughs> oh, you um, made the whole record with him? Oh yeah. Oh wow, yeah. okay. The Very cool. thing, for sure. I miss uh, that now. <laughs> and I talked to him about it too. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris is funny. We um, I, how did I meet? Is that, was that the question? How yeah, did I meet yeah. Chris? 
or when did I meet Chris? I met him in 2017. Um, and he was friends with Jessica Mayfield and that's how I ended up meeting him. Um, and then we ended up doing that record that summer. So I think that was, yeah, that was summer 2018 is when we made that record and we recorded the whole thing in like about a month, over about a month's time in the morning. Uh, I don't think any of it was cut during the day ever. <laughs> and then um, he moved away from Nashville and started to head out west. Um, and while he was heading out west, I sort of threw some some overdubs on it. Uh, Richie Kirkpatrick, uh, an amazing guitar player who has played with uh, Kesha and also Jessica and Band of Horses. Uh, he came in and put some real madman sounding stuff on it. Uh, yeah. kind of blew my mind. Um, yeah. And, uh, I don't know. I love talking to Chris, man. We we're still, yeah. <laughs> we were texting the other day about, um, uh, what was it we were talking about? It was pretty interesting. He was, he, he brought up what would be the correct word here? Um, for someone who you're, you're playing, say you're playing someone a new song and as they're listening to it, they start, talking over it but when they talk over it they're talking they're saying that they hate it when other people talk over songs but it's exactly what they're doing in that moment so what's the word for that is that meta is that irony and i was like i think it's irony but it's it's not um you know it's not the way hipsters use the word it's like the actual definition of the word irony, <laughs> which led us to talking about yeah it's not like the incorrect usage in the Alanis Morissette song. It'd be really funny if someone showed up while she was playing her song Ironic and held up a sign uh, <laughs> that basically says, this is not the correct use of the word irony. And I was like, well, that would be ironic. And then, yeah, that's, that's right, right. Our yeah. text words. We have the same kind of text. Uh, we actually, we did a, last night we did a um, an improv show, just me and him. And I put it up today. Really? You can check it out. It's it's pretty ridiculous. We were just talking about our tech messages and just kind of going up the top of our head. And oh, he's, shit. He's such a good storyteller. You know, it's just no matter what the topic is, he just makes it interesting. Wait, that's that's part of this podcast you did? Yeah. Oh, shit. I got I to gotta listen to that. Yeah, I did it yesterday. I can say when I, I'm going to probably do this tomorrow, like edit this and hand it to you uh, before I even put it out there. So I'll send you that link with it as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I want to hear that. Um, and he, so, first of all, "Fail Yourself" is one of my favorite records. Not only of his, but of like all time. That's, uh, I mean, it's a heavy record, but it's so good. It's so fucking good. There's so many interesting things going on in it. Um, yeah, he's a very good writer. Yeah, that was that was why I was drawn to work with him. His songwriting. Absolutely. So, do you have any future plans to collab with him again, or? I mean, we've said we're going to, but I mean, there's like nothing, <laughs> there's nothing in the books. Right. I got um, you. I mean, I believe Failure Sculptures is about to be technically re-released. Yes. Alongside like a fresh group of songs. Yes. He did out in California, which I've heard and I think is, they're also great. Um, they're, yeah, they're fantastic. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm excited that that may end up getting another uh, breath of fresh air breathed into it. Um, Absolutely, but yeah, I'm. I think we'll probably end up doing something together again, but I'm not sure when. Yeah, uh, nobody knows. Nobody's sure of anything anymore. Um, so those are you know hard questions. But all right, so let's get into some of your uh, favorites, if that's cool. Yeah. Um, this is a tough one, but favorite singer songwriter, <laughs> David Byrne. Wow, awesome. Uh, favorite indie movie, if you have one. <laughs> favorite indie movie. I already said my favorite movie, but it definitely was not an indie movie. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm blanking on that one. Uh, or, you know. <laughs> it's funny, when you said favorite indie <laughs> movie, the first thing that popped into my head was The Puffy Chair. Which is not a bad movie, and it's definitely not my favorite indie movie, but it's, I don't know why, that's just, whenever I think of the phrase indie movie, that movie pops into my head. I gotta be honest with you, I never heard of it, and I'm usually pretty good with that. So what I do, why I ask this is because I always like to write down a suggestion that I never heard of. Uh, so Puffy Chair, what, what is this all about? <laughs> it's about, uh, 
she's, I think it's, I'm going to screw this up because I haven't seen it since two, I watched it once. I, I Believe it or not, I rented it from Blockbuster Video and it's, it's the story of this uh, brother, this guy and his brother uh, who are trying to get this puffy chair that is vintage and has been through hell repaired as a gift for their father. Okay. And it's just about the adventures that ensue of them trying to like find this random person who's going to repair the chair, restore the chair. And um, I mean, it's a super low budget film. It's, yeah, I don't even know if I would recommend it. <laughs> it's a movie. Well, I'm going to watch it now. So, <laughs> indie movie. Of course, I'm going to think of something as soon as we're done with it. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, you know, text it to me. Um, so favorite rap album <laughs> mm. once again if you have no i god i like a lot of rap actually um pinning down a favorite is tough um wow uh i mean i still have a soft spot for um that for uh the chronic dr dre of course yeah I mean, going back and listening to it now, it's it's like unbelievably misogynistic. And oh yeah, oh it's insane. That didn't really <laughs> register when I was ten years old. You know, right. I just liked the 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 beats and the bass lines and the attitude behind all of it. And I I really do like Dr. Dre's production from that era. But I don't know. It's it's hard to <laughs> come to terms with this music. <laughs> Well, essentially, you know, 10 years old, most of us are innocent, you know? Mm -hmm. So you can't, you know, yeah. You listen to it now, you're like, holy shit, that's, that's fucking crazy. Uh, <laughs> I still go ahead and call it my favorite rap album. It is great, man. I mean, it's just, it's timeless. It still sounds good, as good as it's it did. It's not lyrically there. timeless, but it's No, definitely not lyrically timeless. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, production wise and and you know obviously the uh, arrangement is, is timeless. Yeah, yeah, you tapped into some good vibes there for sure. Absolutely. Um favorite curse word. <laughs> mm. Shit. I overused the word shit. Oh, you're the first one to say that. Everyone says fuck. Yeah, I <laughs> Yeah, not for me. I like it. <laughs> Awesome. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. What kind of what kind of uh, wine are you drinking there? This is a Malbec, but okay. it's a French Malbec. Most Al Malbecs you find are gonna be from Argentina. And this okay. is a French one. It's called well, I don't even remember what it's called, but Cahors, I think is how you pronounce it. Okay. It was recommended to me by a friend who is a member of a wine club. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to take his advice because I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> sure. Well, it looks good, and I wish I had a glass. Oh, you're you're, <laughs> you're screen sharing with me. I am screen sharing with you. So obviously. Um, you know, there's the little uh, promo we got, but so we're gonna go through a couple of pictures. Okay. And, uh, we'll describe them a little bit for the listeners and then tell me what's going on. If, of course, you remember. So uh, oh. this isn't actually a picture. I pulled this from the music video. Um, but were you actually getting punched in the, so uh, let me describe it first. So Patrick is getting punched in the face uh, with a boxing glove. Um, obviously there's a hand inside of it punching him. <laughs> And what I want to know is, are you really getting punched in the face? Because it looks like you really are. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, how'd it feel? <laughs> it felt terrible. That was yeah. very real. I um, Part of it's my fault, but I, I knew I was going to show up to get punched in the face. Um, first of all, that's Rollin Haas punching me in the face, who okay. plays drums with me. He's always my, my first choice drummer whenever I play live. But uh, he has his own music uh, that YK Records puts out. And uh, this was for a song called Bully. And that's him punching me. And I got hit twice on that side. And then I got hit twice on the other side. And it really wasn't that bad. What made it so bad is that I had a cold that day. Mm. And so 
you know, my head was ultra sensitive, way more sensitive than it sure. normally would be. And I had the worst splitting headache for like two days after this video. But um, I feel like if I was well, I didn't have that cold, it would have been fine. Sure. Uh, would you say it was worth it? Because it's a great fucking video. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, I, I would do it again, <laughs> and it yielded some great still shots. As, yeah. As evidenced here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So, um, Patrick here is on stage, uh, belting it out, man, doing his thing. Um, yeah, I think I was just yelling at somebody to uh, stop <laughs> touching a girl inappropriately in the back of the show. Are you serious? Hey, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not cool. Yeah, right. Like uh, Dave Grohl, right? No, who did that? <laughs> Somebody did that kind of recently. They like stopped the entire show and was like, I think it wasn't even a good band, really. It was like, like Stained or something like that. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, that, what's the guy's name from Stained? Aaron? Yes. Something? Uh, he does country music now. Yes. Yep. Um, but does, is Stained still playing also? I it, maybe it was like an older show or I just seen it like last year. He he stopped the show and was like, if you guys don't stop touching her or whatever, we're walking off stage and this and that. I thought that was kind of cool actually, you know? Yeah, good for him. That's the right thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. for sure. That's definitely not what I'm doing in this photo, but that's, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, that's just what it made me think of for some reason. I'm singing, I'm singing some song at some show. You don't remember the show? I just think it's a great shot. So I don't know if it was like a specific moment that you remember or. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm 90% sure here. that was the YK Records showcase a couple of years ago. And okay. I think that my friend Miles Price probably took that photo, if I'm correct about that. If that's that show, then he took that photo. Very cool. Very cool. Ah. So. Uh, shots. Music video still shots. This Okay, so this is a music video still shot. Um, and there's a woman behind Patrick putting uh, some paint across his forehead. Uh, I'm a little colorblind, so is it pink? <laughs> pink paint? It's pink, yes. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, what music video is this for and what's going on? <laughs> That's for the song Pretend It, directed by Joshua Shoemaker. And the woman doing that to me is Molly Pardon. Okay, yes. Who is about to release a new EP soon that awesome. I worked on with her son. Uh, she is an incredible writer and singer. Um, and she sings on that song with me. So I asked her to be in the yeah. video too. Very cool. Well, I'm definitely excited for that. Um, when it, uh, you know when it's coming out? I, I'm so bad at this. Uh, <laughs> very soon. Okay. Definitely this year. It's an EP called Rosemary. Okay. Um, she has already released two of the songs off of it. Um, but she'll release the rest of it soon. I, I read about it on Instagram and I, I took note of it, but I can't remember the exact date. I understand. Believe me. Okay. So this one I, I found kind of interesting. So um, here we have um, Patrick again uh, next to uh, another gentleman here wearing a hat. I don't know, maybe drinking a little red wine or a little scotch or something. Um, yeah, wow. And you have, a, you have an interesting look going on in your face. You know, not, I'm not saying bad. Um, <laughs> it's just interesting. Like, I'm not, what's going on? <laughs> uh, I've never thought this before, but now I haven't seen this photo in so long. But now that I'm looking <laughs> at it, it looks like the musical guest photos on SNL. Um, oh, shit. But anyway, that's a interesting side note. This is an old photo. This has got to be, this has to be about a decade old. Um, this was a Christmas party for an email marketing company that um, the girl that I was with at the time, she worked for this company. So I, I just went to the party as her boyfriend. And the guy with me is the same thing. He's the, the husband of somebody who also worked at that email marketing company. Um, and there were a lot of free booze at that at that party. So I think I was a few <laughs> at that point and it, it caught me mid blink, like a yep. Tim and Eric moment or something. Yeah. <laughs> and I That's remember exactly when, what it reminded me of. Yeah. And <laughs> I just remember saying to him, I was like, I'm gonna post this photo. And he was like, All right, you better. And then I, <laughs> I actually it seemed it was funny in the moment. <laughs> and then it wound up on a podcast some some years yeah. later. 
I, I can't say I ever expected that. Who the fuck would ever expect it? All right. So uh, mm -hmm. once again, we got a nice, uh, this is a nice black and white shot. Uh, Patrick's with a uh, dog. Is that, what kind of dog is that? <laughs> I know the dog's name. Uh, that dog's name is Mary Lou. Um, okay. well, we're going back in time here. This has got to be about 11 years old. Um, yeah, this is just a friend of mine's dog at their house. Uh, she took that photo. Um, Emily Zebert took that photo. What an adorable dog. That, that dog would only show affection, though. That was like the least dog dog I've ever met because... I, I watched that dog a few times for her and it never, it would never show affection. It would like never come when you called it or, you know, snuggle with you or whatever. It, it would, it would like jump up at you if you would leave for three or four hours and then come back. But it was right. That dog was pretty cold <laughs> with everybody, <laughs> not just me. Right. <laughs> but that was like a rare moment that made that dog look, that's an uncharacteristic moment for that dog. I, honestly, to be honest with you, see, I don't read the captions or anything. So I just look at the picture and I'm like, oh, I just assume it's your dog, but obviously it's not. Um, so, you know, sometimes that happens, but yeah. very cute dog. Great picture. I spent a lot of time with that dog <laughs> during those years. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this one, uh, we have Patrick uh, wearing a clown nose uh, with a cigarette in his mouth, unlit cigarette. Um, I can't really tell where you are. Um, I looks like some kind of like a stage thing. I don't know. Um, That's an old then, studio I worked in. That was a converted warehouse studio. Oh, very cool. Uh, in Nashville. And that's Chris Crofton behind me. He is a, he's a comedian. He lived in Nashville at the time, but he's out in LA now making a go of it. Um, very funny guy. This, this was part of a comedy skit that uh, was getting filmed at that studio. And uh, yeah, that's just a photo of my girlfriend at the time caught in the moment of all of it. Very cool. So Chris Crofton's on the left behind yeah. you? Okay. And yep. who, do you know who the other guys are? Yep. That's Patrick Rogers on the right. He, he writes for a local publication, the Nashville scene here. Uh, oh, very cool. A few ethical journalists left. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. So what, what's up with the clown? Is it red, red nose day or just feeling like a sad clown or something? <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I mean, there, there were a lot more people in that room than in this photo. Um, there were probably like 40 people in there and they all had the nose on and it was for some, it was for some comedy skit where it's like when it got edited, it's like it, nobody had a clown nose on and then it like pans back to everybody and everyone has a clown nose and it freaks the person out. And I don't know. It was something like that. Very cool. I'm having trouble remembering exactly. It's all good. It's all good. That's why, you know, I do this. I bring, I try to bring up some memories. <laughs> um, so I found this kind of funny. Obviously it's a, an advertisement for, it's on a bench, an advertisement for um, a real estate company, Courtney and Kurt. So obviously what's the first thing you think of? Hmm. Kurt Cobain, Courtney Love, right? Sure. So um, <laughs> where, where did you find this? <laughs> I took this photo in LA uh, about two years ago and uh yeah, I was, I was just walking back to this Airbnb I was staying at, and I walked past this, and uh, I thought it was hilarious. Now, I, this is my main reason I brought this up. Do you think that this was, I mean, I'm sure they're, they're names, but do you think this was intentional, like as far as? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, right? Yeah, I think they're milking it for everything they can. <laughs> <laughs> very cool, very cool, very funny. Uh, this, I love this. <laughs> so this is a picture of Walmart. Um, some shelves in Walmart and it, above the shelves here it says own the school year like a hero <laughs> and on the shelves is just wine just bottles of wine first yeah. of all what state is this because they're they don't sell wine at Walmart here um and why did they put that sign above this <laughs> uh, this is um well shit what state was this <laughs> it was on tour so actually okay. I I'm having trouble remembering. You'll have to forgive me. Uh, All good. All but good. I mean, obviously, I was trying to buy some wine, and I looked up and saw that, and it just made me laugh so hard. And I was like, I have to, I have to document this. I had to look at it a few times. I'm like, is it a perspective thing? Like, is it further back? But no, it looks like it's right there above that. Well, yeah, it's with it's an a, arrow. <laughs> it was a couple of aisles behind. Oh, it was. 
Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, it's not supposed to be uh, talking about the wine, <laughs> but um, yeah, just that view was really funny to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do we got going on here? So in, we, we have a little styrofoam plate with um, saran wrap on it and three slices of bread and a price tag of 49 cents. So <laughs> this was some gas station on tour. Uh, again, I mean, just that. <laughs> looking at it again is really funny to me. I don't know. I mean, it, it's hard to explain why I think that's funny. Um, I feel like a lot of people probably wouldn't agree with me and think that's funny, but uh, I don't no, know. I, I like the, uh, uh, the uh, it's just so absurd. <laughs> <laughs> go, go through the, I mean, the packaging's probably worth more than the bread. Yeah, I have a couple questions and I pulled this because I do agree with you, it is funny. Um, what the fuck hold on okay here we go um why <laughs> why yeah i mean also why would so you I need three said, slices of bread ever i bought it too i did <laughs> i did purchase this uh mainly so i could get back in the van and show everybody and, and they're like look how funny this is ha ha <laughs> um 49 cents i mean it's not it's not a bad price but at the same time it's not really a good deal. Um, no, I mean, you can get an entire <laughs> loaf of that quality that yeah. bread for like twice, just twice the amount. Yeah, I just wonder why it's, they felt the need to do this and three slices too. Interesting. <laughs> well, they All got right. my money. So this, uh, this needs no explanation. This is Patrick's debut LP, Patrick Dampier, Sam Pretty. And if you don't have it, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Seriously. Um, go out and get it. Download it on. A lot of people are going to have to ask that question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> download it on all the download shit and make sure you order the vinyl in Bandcamp. And really quick, um, Christopher, just, you know what? Hold on. Let's just uh, get out of the screen. Come back to normal here. Okay. Christopher sent me. He said he told me to talk to you about Esteban, the guitar instructor. Oh, brilliant! Yes. And told me to show you this picture. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, this is a <laughs> this is a long-standing thing we have. Um, I have. I'll just say I have a lot of time in Vestaban in this. That's our thing. We, uh, <laughs> you know, take words that have the I got e it. in it. Yeah, you, you get yeah. it. You're a smart guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't have to explain this to you. No, no, I'm, I'm saying I automatically understand it, like, because it's, yeah. it's funny, you know? While we were making failure sculptures, this is something that we ran into the ground. Uh, <laughs> we, and I mean, it would be, we, would, we would do it so much to where it like, wouldn't be funny at all anymore. And then it would be funny again because of how much we overdid it. He's a funny guy, man. It's 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 crazy because I just got to know him over the past uh, several months, really. Um, oh, okay, I've known him for a long time, but we just recently kind of connected. Um, and I've always listened to his music, always loved it, but I never knew the side of him that is just so fucking funny, man. He's so great, and uh, I can yeah. see you guys having a, a joke like this or having a good time, for sure. Um, so this is my final question I'm going to ask, and I ask everybody. So on a scale from one to hell fucking yeah, how stoked for you to be here today? <laughs> um, 11. 11. Oh my God, it's the first time, man. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate that, man. I'm, I'm fucking stoked to be here. I Mike. love it. I love it, man. Thank you so much, Patrick. And uh, of course, you're welcome back anytime. Thank you. And we'll keep in touch, man. I like to keep in touch with everybody and do like fun little things in the future, you know? Uh, well, sounds good, man. I appreciate you having me on. Thanks so much. You got it. Oh, fucking